Um, and then, of course, you know, they came in, and, and, and it just goes right along with what God's been teaching us. You know, every so often, you know, the Holy Spirit just speaks to you. And um, so, of course, she came, and, and uh, you know, she you know, was able to receive from the pantry, but then God, you know, the Holy Spirit spoke to us, and, and I invited her around, and I asked some of these beautiful ladies of our church, and I said to her, I said, I said, I, I'm, I'm, we introduced them, and, and I said, I want you to know something. I said, these ladies that are standing right here in front of you, I said, I'm, I'm going to promise you something. I said, these ladies know how to pray. I said, these ladies know how to pray. They know how to get in touch, you know, with a God who can change your life. And we want you to know, you know, I know you feel like you're in a desperate place, but you need to know something. God has not abandoned you. God is still with you. God's working things out. And I know life gets tough and sometimes things, you know, don't go the way we expect. And, and, and I've shared that with you, right? You know, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, we just have to keep in mind about God because I know for us, you know, there are times we wake up and, you know, a couple times now, huh, Pam? You know, the rug's been pulled out. We were all excited because, man, things were going our way. And all of a sudden, whoop, somebody pulls the rug out. And we're like, oh, man, didn't see that coming. Can I tell you again and reassure you, those words have never come out of God's mouth. God has never spoken those words. Woo, didn't see that coming. <laughs> God has never said that. God will never say that. Anyway, of course, we were privileged enough, you know, to pray for and bless her uh, in some tangible ways there yesterday, and and uh, she left, and and that's and I shared that I shared that with the folks that were at the pantry yesterday, and um, you know I said to them I said, you know, because you just feel so good, it just feels so good because you know without a shadow of a doubt, you've made a difference in somebody's life. So it reminds me of that that story that. I shared here one time, we shared a little video, and it was about this person who was, you know, fixing uh, these little sack lunches, you know, and, and just doing some different things and going into the streets of New York. And, of course, he had a, a friend of his who was a skeptic, you know, and he's down there trying to pass, you know, food out. And he's, he walks up to this one homeless man and, and, you know, he hands him this sack lunch and he prays with him and that, and, you know, and, and you know, then he goes on. But, he's, he's, you know, he's telling his friend about all this and his friend looks at him and he says, Seriously, of all of the homeless and all of the hungry and all of the whatever that it is going on around you and your few little sack lunches, you really think that makes a difference? He pointed to the one man that was sitting there eating his little sack lunch. It made a difference to him. Made a difference to him. You know, and maybe we can't save the whole world. Maybe we can't feed every hungry person, you know, around the world. But the people that we touch through the ministries of this local church, guess what? Makes a difference to them. And I thank God for that opportunity to do that. Because yesterday, Bruce and Barb, all the hard work you do and, and all the help that you get and, and everything that goes into that pantry, guess what? Yesterday, it made a difference. It made a difference. And that's all God wants us to do, is live our lives in such a way that we make a difference. Amen. Only if it's just one person, we can make a difference. And that's what we've been learning. I want to conclude last week's sermon. Um, pursue to prophesy. So what, what's the one thing we all learned last week? Remember, we, we said it to our neighbor. I am a prophet. I'm a prophet. You're a prophet. Why? Because we hear from God and we speak those things to other folks. That's what it was yesterday. You know, I'm, I'm no great orator, you know. Why did that prayer that I prayed yesterday, and please understand, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm not looking for, you know, a feather in my cap. That's not what this is about. I'm just trying to 
you know, put it out there and help you to understand. It's not me. What you see in me, the writer says, isn't me at all. What you see in me is what God is doing through me. And that's why that prayer impacted her so much yesterday. Because it wasn't me who was praying. It was the Spirit teaching me and leading me how to pray. And trust me, when the Holy Spirit prays, <laughs> guess what? It makes a difference. It makes a difference when the Holy Spirit is praying. So we learned, you know, we all can hear from God and speak those things to other people. It's called prophecy. And I'm not going to re-preach last week's sermon, but we kind of laid the little, little bit of groundwork. We learned about Old Testament prophets versus New Testament prophets. You know, why we don't necessarily need, you know, the Old Testament prophets, you know, like we did back then, because, you know, God has, you know, changed kind of the way He does things. You know, how did He change it? Jesus. He changed it through Jesus, and He changed it because now we have His written Word. We don't need somebody to tell us what our future is, which, by the way, we're going to study that. So I do want to put that plug in again for, night, for tonight. Um, uh, Brad Zockel will be here, and uh, he's authored a couple of books about heaven, and um, we're excited about that. We're going to have a little bit of talk about heaven, and basically he's doing the heaven tour, and, and the subject of it is heaven real. I don't think there's anybody in this church he would have to convince, uh, but there may be a few people out there. But we're going to do that tonight, 6 o'clock, downstairs. So come on out, be with us. So, but anyway, you know, God has already laid out the future. God has told us, you know, and given us the word that he used to give to the prophets about, you know, judgment is coming and you need to repent. And God used to speak that through the word, to the world through prophets, Right? Does he need to do that anymore? No, because he's spoken it to us through the prophets in the written word. He's given us the Bible and he's taught us, here's what's coming, here's what's going to happen. And the only way to avoid being caught up in all of this is very simple. Repent. We don't need a prophet to stand between us and be a mediator between us and God. You know, God has rent the veil. Now we have access, you know, to go in. And, um, you know, of course, when we begin to study and we begin to learn about the gifts of the Spirit to the church, we learn about all the gifts of the Spirit of the church, and one of those things is, is tongues. And, of course, we have to kind of understand a little bit about that. There's, there are different types of tongues. There are different types of things that God gives. And, you know, does everybody receive the gift of tongues? No. Does everybody, you know, be, is everybody, everybody able to receive, you know, the gift of tongues through, through the Holy Spirit as evidence of full, full immersion baptism in the Holy Spirit? The answer to that question is yes. You know, you have the ability to receive that. That's why the Apostle wrote, and these are the scriptures, same scriptures from last week, so if you didn't get them all down, didn't get a chance to read them, please do that. Um, but I want you to, but we're going to focus mainly today on 1 Corinthians chapter 4. But Paul there in the writings in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, also in 1 Corinthians you know, chapter 14, he began to explain a few things and help people to understand some things you know, about you know, the Holy Spirit, about tongues, about the gift of tongues. And one of the things, if you study it out and you kind of realize, you know, they were kind of like some of us Pentecostals, you know. When, when we learned about tongues, and man, when, when you know, Penny, you know, we, we, that's why we call ourselves Pentecostals, because we're all about tongues. Man, and we just love it when we come to church and the Spirit falls and people are just falling out all over the church and speaking in tongues. And man, we are just lighting this place up. I grew up in that kind of thing. Okay? Am I, am I knocking that? Am I bashing that or throwing it onto the bus? No, not at all. I'm not. But you have to understand, you know, this is not the first time people have gotten excited about that. It was happening here in the, in the church at Corinth. You know, and then, man, they, they got excited. Man, they were, they were speaking in tongues and they were dancing and falling out all over the church. And, man, they were having themselves a time. But Apostle Paul says, hey, listen, pay attention here. There's a few things you need to learn. So he goes on then in 1 Corinthians 14. And, you know, that's one of the places, because there are a lot of people out there that say, you know what, tongues is not for us. It's done. It's gone. I don't believe that, because if you read these scriptures several places in here, the Bible teaches us to covet those gifts. God said you should desire those things. I don't think God would tell us in His Word, in the New Testament now, 
We ain't talking Old Testament, we're talking New Testament. I don't believe God's the kind of God that would tell me to desire something that I can't have. So if tongues died with the early church in Acts, why would God tell me to desire it? That'd be kind of cruel, wouldn't it? But there are many, multiple times in the Scripture where he says, man, you need, you need to experience this thing. You need to desire this thing. And trust me, I've experienced it. Yeah, it's some good stuff. It's some good stuff. But yet, the church was getting to a point where that's all they wanted to do. You know, now, Paul, in, in this particular letter, and in this, you know, in this particular exhortation, you know, he was trying to help the church to understand, guess what? Speaking in tongues and falling out and doing all that kind of stuff, it's great, but you need to understand something. It's only helping you. So he goes on, and, and, and I had to do quite a bit of research here, because same as you, when I begin to read in 1 Corinthians 14 here, it almost appeared, you know, in, in, in sequential you know, verses here, that Paul literally contradicted himself. Because he says in, in 1 Corinthians 14, he began to speak about tongues, and what we're talking about here is not the gift, of tongues where God speaks you know through a voice to the church gives a message to the church and then is interpreted and he's speaking to the church what he's talking about here is our own personal prayer language you know the tongues that God gave me so I can have those wonderful beautiful private conversations with God you know and the Holy Spirit prays for me and prays through me and prays over me you know for the things that I need you know that are coming because I don't know those things so I don't know that I should be praying for those things but the Holy Spirit does. So He has those private conversations in a heavenly prayer language over me and for me with God the Father. I don't understand them, but boy, I, I can feel them. And that's what He was talking about here. He was referencing our own personal private languages because people were just coming out and, you know, they, they didn't speak a word of English in church. They were just falling out all over the place. And, you know, Paul said, you know, hey, he said, that's a good thing. And he said, you need to understand, I'm on board with it. Because I like to speak in tongues just as much as all of you do. He said, it's a good feeling, it's, it's a nice thing, and, and it's great, and I would rather do it. But he said, you need to understand something. There's some things we need to understand about this and get this thing put in order because we still have a job to do. Amen. That job is to carry the gospel of Jesus to those who are lost. So what he does here, he goes on and he begins to explain, and one of the first statements that he makes, he comments about, you know, tongues is not for the believer, but it is for the unbeliever. Is what he said. And then he said, prophecy is for the believer. So we look at that and we think, you know, because then on down below, he says exactly the opposite. He talks about, you know, the tongues is not an evangelistic tool. You know, and when we have unbelievers come out and everybody in the church is speaking in tongues, how in the world are we ever going to you know, share or have that person get saved because nobody's talking to them in a language they can understand? How are they going to learn anything? How are you going to have people come to your church and get saved if nobody understands what you're saying? Say, well, now, Paul, you've said exactly two opposite things here. One time you say, you know, tongues is for the unbeliever, and the next verse down you say, you know, you need to be prophesying and speaking in English so people can understand you. You know, if you don't, no other unbelievers are going to get saved. Can I help you with that for a little bit? You have to, you have to understand, he's talking about tongues in the beginning portion. He's talking about tongues as a sign. And in the end part, he is speaking to, as about tongues used as an evangelistic tool. So he's re addressing two different things. And the uh, thing you have to understand is he's addressing two different types of believers versus unbelievers. When he speaks in the very first part, when he said tongues was for the unbeliever, what he was speaking about, he was speaking directly to the church. And he was talking about the Jews who yet had not begun to realize and believe that people outside of the Jewish church could get saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit. But what had happened was, we know what happened. The Word of God got carried to those who were not Jewish. They were not part of the church. They were Samaritans. They were Greek. They were Roman. They were all of these other things. None of them were church people. And yet, the, you know, the apostles 
were going into these countries. They were going into these places on these crusades and on these evangelistic tours and people were getting saved and they were walking in and here's all these people that become believers in Jesus Christ. You know, and they say to them, well, you know, have you experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and spoke in tongues as evidence? They said, what? What's that? We've never heard of that. So they went on and began to explain to them, began to lay their hands on them, and what began to happen is they too received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. And what, what he was teaching us here is that was a sign to the, to the church people that didn't believe they could get saved because now they see these people receiving it, they hear them speaking in tongues, and, and there's no doubt when they begin to speak in tongues they don't understand, and yet they're talking in, in a language that somebody else understands because they're, they're Greek and yet they're talking in a language the Jewish people understand say wait a minute how's that possible it was a sign to prove to those unbelieving Jews guess what you ain't the only ones that can receive this thing that's you know and then he went on to say prophecy is for the believer and what he was trying to get across to us there, see, because you have to understand, there were some folks that watched what was going on. They were watching them go through and just lay hands on people. And people were being healed, people were being baptized, falling out, speaking in tongues, and, you know, and they were thinking to themselves, well, you know, I've been in the church for a while now, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good, if, if they can do it, why can't I? So they went out and they, they tried doing the same thing. The only problem was it didn't work for them. Why? Because you can't give something away that you yourself don't have. <laughs> That's why he was saying, you want to begin to prophesy, you want to begin to hear from the Lord and share it with somebody else. Guess what? It's only for those who believe and have received themselves. In other words, you can't help somebody else until you yourself have been helped. Amen? Amen? So that's what Paul was saying here in this. He was speaking about tongues as a sign. And he said, when it comes to the church, he said, those tongues and that evidence is for the church people who don't believe anybody else can do it. It's a sign to them. And as far as prophecy, as far as sharing and, and being that evangelist, being that person that is carrying the word of the Lord, it's for the believers. It's for those who have received and who do believe. And, you know, because... You have to understand, you know, one of the things that we have to, we have to be careful of, and, and I know this is something that we don't want to think about or accuse ourselves of, but, you know, some of us really need to hear the same message. What he was trying to tell us is, you know, as believers, they realized when he said they were believers, what he meant was that they came to understand you can't pick and choose who gets saved and who don't. It ain't up to you. And I know that sounds like, you know, but I got news for you. There's probably still some churches out there that struggle with that. There's only certain people they feel like could come into their church and get saved. You know, it's like, well, now, yeah, no, that's not necessarily true. They could get saved if they change themselves if they clean themselves up and they start doing things a little bit different, then yes, absolutely, they could come to this church and get saved. I got news for you, it don't work that way. Thank you. What he's saying is, you got to be a believer. In other words, you got to believe wholeheartedly, you got to believe that anybody who hears the word of God and is touched in their heart. The Bible says, believes in their heart and confesses with their mouth. Something happens to that person. They come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now I got news for you. It may not change everything there is to change about them overnight. Understand? Getting saved isn't the end. It ain't like we clean them all up and dress them up and, and get them the way, to look the way we want and act the way we want and then we bring them to church and get them saved. It's like, okay, we're all done now. We've cleaned them up. We've got them to be good church people and now we're going to bring them to the altar and let them get saved and whoo, hallelujah, we're finished. Getting saved ain't the ending. Getting saved is the beginning. 
That's why Jesus taught us about discipleship. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we just bring people, you know, the Word of God, allow them to get saved and say, good for you. We're going to write your number down in our book. We're going to count you as a, a conversion in this church, and, and you're going to make us look good when we get to heaven because you came to this church and got saved. By the way, see you later. Have a nice life. That ain't what we're supposed to do either. The Bible says we're supposed to bring them in. Add them. Add them to our number. What's that mean? <laughs> I'm going to get crucified for this. Take them in as members of the church. How can I do that? I saw them down the road the other day and they still smoke. I know I'm shaving as close. And I'm not just talking about our church. I'm talking about organized religion. Sometimes we're just too good for our own good. And we got to get past all of that. We got to get past all of that. We got to become believers. In other words, what we got to believe is when we begin to pray for this city, when we bring in, begin to bring the glory, pray the glory of God down over this city, and, and we, we man the gates of this city, you know, on the sheet store. And I know some people are still looking at that and thinking, seriously, Pastor, you're calling sheets the gates to this city? Try to get in or out of this city without passing one. But you understand? But we have, to, we have to come to some conclusions here and we have to understand because I promise you when, when the Spirit of the Lord begins to fall on this city and people are moved you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit to be reconciled to God, I got news for you. All of them don't think like we think. All of them don't act like we act. All of them don't talk like we talk. There may be a day and time Oh, God, help me now. There may be a day in time, at some point, you walk back into the cafe of this church on a Sunday morning, and you may find a couple people back there, you know, having a cup of coffee, and you may hear just a couple of bad words coming out of their mouth. I got news for you. I have no intention of asking them to leave. Now, can I talk to you as your pastor? You better not either. You say, Pastor, really? Yep. I'm telling you right now, I know of churches where that's happened. Yes. I know people who have walked into churches and, and been there, and somewhere along the line, people found out something about them, found out something about their life, and, and, and some self-appointed, righteous, whatever they want to call themselves, oh, God help me, has went to them and said, you know, you probably would be better off at another church. I know that happened. God help us. Say, Pastor, what's this got to do with our prayer? Because when we begin to pray and the Spirit of the Lord begins, you know, we better be prepared to receive whoever it is the Holy Spirit draws. Who, who said that? Whosoever. I heard that. We better learn what that word means. And, and this is what the Apostle Paul was trying to address here as a sign. So we know that, you know, only believers, because that's what he said. he said. He said, tongues is a sign to the unbelievers. Guess what? What these people are receiving is real. Well, how can it be real, Pastor? They still cuss like a sailor. Well, guess what? So did I. There was a day and time, it was awful. I was exactly what the Bible talks about. Because, man, I could, I could sing, and I could worship, and I could, man, I could, I mean, I could, I could crush. <laughs> you know the, the old song, uh, The Blood? You know that old song, The Blood? That was one of the first songs I sang as a solo in church when I was a young man. I sang The Blood. Man, I could stand up in church and, and yeah, now I'm bragging. So 
Okay, shoot me. There was a day and time, man, as a young man, I could stand in church, man, and I would just crush that song. I would sing the blood will never lose its power. And then I'd go to school, and you'd hear me talking on Monday or Tuesday, and I guarantee you, you'd do a double take. And you'd look and you'd say, is that the same guy that was just singing the blood in church the other day? You'd never known it by the words that were coming out of my mouth. Because let me tell you, when I, was, when I was talking like that and doing those things, I was crushing it then too. And I was doing it on purpose. Thankfully. And here's what it's about. Thankfully. Pam, somebody loved me enough. Amen. Somebody loved me enough to not just say, you know what, if that's the way you're going to be, why even bother coming? Why, why even bother coming to church? Why even bother singing those songs? They ain't doing you any good. Why don't you just... Thankfully, somebody loved me enough to keep me going. And that's what God is speaking into us. I want us to be prepared. Because I'm telling you right now, and somebody even spoke it, you know, somebody even spoke it the other day. They said, as we begin here in August, and we're going to, you know, we're going we're gonna to reach out from this local church, and we're going to, you know, we're going to go out into the sheet stores, you know, into the parking lots, and, and, and we're going to gather as, as small groups, small bands, you know, and, and we're going to gather, and we're going to begin to pray, you know, God's Spirit over the gates of the city, and we're going to ask God to post warring angels at those places, and, and, and nothing... No, the, the enemy cannot get in or out of this city, you know, until he passes through and, and gets his, you know, uh, pass, go, and, and collects whatever. You know, I mean, you say, Pastor, you really think that's possible? I do. Yes. And somebody had mentioned to me, oh, man, I'm getting so excited about this. What I see happening is we're, we're going to be at the sheets praying, and, and next thing you know, people are going to find out what we're doing, and, and, and people are going to... People are going to want to walk up and, and begin to pray with us. People are going to want to join our prayer service at the sheets. I mean, that excited me when somebody was saying that. But listen to me, okay? Listen to me. Because there may be a few people. God help me now. There may be a few people that have to walk over to the urn outside and put their cigarette out and then walk over and join our prayer service. Can I give you a little piece of advice? Let them pray with you. They may be coming out of sheets with a brown bag. You don't believe me? Talk to this man. I can see it all over his face. He'll tell you the story about what happened to him. You struggled with a few of these, didn't you, Claire? But yet there was somebody who loved you enough, didn't they? Anybody else in the house know what I'm talking about? Met somebody that loved you enough? Loved you through your problems? Loved you through your circumstance? Because I got news for you, I'm not the only one probably inside of this room that didn't get it right the first time. I didn't get it right the first time. And guess what? You know, and that's what we were learning about Thursday night when the Spirit was beginning to speak to us. You know, we're, we're not standing in the gap and being the mediator, you know, to keep God from raining down fire on this city. I got news for you. If you know anything about the, the city of Butler, you know without a shadow of a doubt this is one wicked city. But I got news for you. God ain't mad at them. He loves them same as He loves us. Well, now how can that be? Good heavens, look at us. Look at the way we sing. We're here every Sunday. You're telling me God loves them as much as He loves us? We're all dignified. <laughs> we're, we're worth loving. I, I know it sounds comical. But you know what I'm telling you is absolute truth. You know what I'm telling you is truth. Why do we need to hear this? Because God has called us. God has called us to pray blessing. God has called us to pray the glory 
of the Holy Spirit over this city. God has called us to allow this, the Holy Spirit to work on this city and draw who He will to Him. He's going to make prophets of us. What's that mean? In other words, He's going to speak things to us. We're going to meet people at Sheets. We're going to meet people on the streets who need to hear a word from the Lord. God has given it to you. You can't pick and choose when you walk down the street who you're willing to stop and talk to and share that word with them. Well, how am I going to know? God will tell you. And when God says, see that person right there? I don't know what they're going to look like. I don't know where they're going to be. I don't know what they're going to smell like. But I'm telling you now, when God speaks to your heart and God says, carry my word to them, guess what? <laughs> you know, we can't be we can't be like Jonah. We can't be like Jonah, right? You all know why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, right? It wasn't because he didn't want to be obedient. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because he knew God. And he knew how God was. And he said to God, don't believe me, read it. It's in there. Read the, read the book of Jonah. He says, God, I don't want to go there. I don't want to carry this, this message of judgment. He says, because I know you. He said, I'm going to go in there. He said, and I'm going to preach to this city and I'm going to tell them the judgment of God is going to fall on you, you know, if you don't change what you're doing and repent. And he said, some of these people are going to listen to me. They're going to change what they're doing and then they're going to repent and then you're going to let your judgment go. And then I'm the one that's going to look like an idiot. Trust me, it's in there. I may not use all of the same words I just used, but that's the conversation Jonah had with God. He said, God, I'm not going and telling these people you're going to destroy them because I know you. You'll let them off the hook, just like you always do. They'll repent, and they'll say they're sorry, and you'll say, okay, well, don't let it happen again. And that's why he didn't want to go. You know? So here's the deal. God's not sending us into the city to carry a message of judgment. We're not going into the city of Butler and say, Repent! Or burn in hell. That is not the message God has appointed us to carry to the city. Okay? That's not it. The message God wants to give to us is as a message of love. It's a message of reconciliation. It's a message of care. And we're going to go wherever God leads us. And we're going to speak to whoever God puts in our path. And we're going to let them know, regardless of the circumstance in their life, regardless of, of you know, what they may be confused about in their life. Can I put it that way? You, you fill in those blanks. Because you're going to meet some people who are confused. You're going to meet some people who just really don't know which way is up. You're going to meet some people who are struggling, you know, and they're bound by some things. And man, these things have become strongholds in their life, you know, and, and, and we're, going to, we're going to meet some of those people. But you know what? What God is saying is we need to, we need to, to find those people and we need to go and just as sincerely and as we know how, allow the love of God to ooze out of us and say, you need to know something. God loves you. That's the message God wants us to take. You know, that's why, you know, Paul went on in 1 Corinthians 14 as he went on down and he began to talk about tongues. You know, because he talked about it being a sign, right? We understand what the believer and the unbeliever is in the first statement. Because then he went on down in the next statement. He began to speak to it again. He says, we got to get to the point. He said that, you know, we're not so church-minded that we're really no earthly good. He said, what good is it going to do for somebody to walk into your church who needs to be reconciled to God? Everybody's dancing and falling out and speaking in tongues. They don't understand. They, can I tell you exactly what he said? Want to read it? Read 1 Corinthians chapter 14. You know what Paul said? He said, those people are going to walk into your church and think you're all crazy. Read it. It's what he said. They're going to, they're going to think you're all crazy because they ain't going to understand one thing you're doing. He said, that ain't going to help them. 
That's only helping you. He said, you want to be effective? He says, yes. He said, I would that everybody had the experience you know, of, of, of being fully baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. He said, I'd like for everybody to experience that at least once in their life. But he said, it's even more important to me that you all learn to prophesy. Because prophesying ain't about you. It's about the people you're speaking to. Because what is prophecy? Prophecy is hearing from the Lord and sharing it with somebody who needs to hear it. That's what prophecy is all about. Paul says, I want all of you to experience tongues. But he said, even more so. He said, I want you to experience what it is to prophesy to somebody. Because I'm telling you, just like yesterday, when that girl left here yesterday, you can't imagine. Some, somebody back me up. Ladies, felt good, didn't it? Felt good. Because we know, we know we made a difference in somebody else's life. And I'm telling you, that's exactly what God is calling this church to do. Now, He's not, he's not calling us to bust out the walls and make this church two, three hundred, four hundred seats. You know, and, and see, you remember I, I shared that with you because I thought, you know, at one time maybe that's what God wanted to do, man, because I thought, boy, imagine the effect we could have on this city. You know, if we, if we grew to two, three, four hundred people and having two and three services a weekend and, man, we were just, you know, and I'm fantasizing all about that, you know, and God said, I don't need another church like that. I got lots of churches like that. That's what God said to me. He said, that's not what I'm calling you to. He said, what I'm calling you to, what I'm calling this church to, he said, I need some churches that know how to pray. And God's teaching me. God's teaching me. If this church learns how to pray the way God wants us to pray. And I'm not saying just making up our own words, making up our own mind. I'm talking about being led by the Holy Spirit. And that's what He's doing. He's leading me. He's speaking to my heart. And He's telling us to strategically, you know, surround this city and, and here's what we're going to do and how, here's how we're going to do it. And, 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 he's, and he, all he's saying is just do what I lead you to do. But be prepared because as you pray, as you begin to pray down the glory of God over this city, he said people are going to be drawn. What does he say in his word? I. If I be lifted up. He said, I'm going to draw all men. So guess what? When he says all, as you stand all over this building, anybody ever look that up? I love doing those Greek word studies. I, I love the, the Greek word studies that you do. And if you look up that three little word, it's a really neat Greek little word. And in the Bible where it says all, you know what the meaning of the Greek word is for all? All. All. That's what it means. No, nobody's excluded. Ain't, ain't nobody we could walk by in the city of Butler and say, yeah, this word ain't for them. Says who? Says who? Well, you know, what are people going to think when I drag this person out to church on Sunday morning? I can tell you what I think. I'm thinking, hey, you must have been listening to God. I hope, because that's what the Apostle Paul, and that's why he said, he said, more, more than anything else, what I desire for you is that you learn to prophesy. And what he's saying is, please learn to hear from God and take that word to somebody who needs it. That's what he's saying to us. And I believe that's what the Spirit of God is speaking to this church. God wants to bless this city. Who's he counting on? To speak those blessings. Guess what? He's empowered us. He's given us the authority to post angels at the gates of this city. And then He's given us the authority and the power through the power of the Holy Spirit. He's given us the authority to stand over this city and speak the blessings of God. I don't know about you, but I feel pretty privileged that God entrusts this church to bless this city. I'm not going to put a feather in our cap. We don't have what it takes. 
It's all Him. It's all Him. All we got to do is do what He tells us. And I'm counting on that. I'm going to be the best leader I can be. I'm going to stand before you surrendered. I had that in my notes, and I will, I will close with this. I will close with this statement. Steve, if you can get this, you might be able to put it on the board so we can remember it. It says, hearing from God does not come through effort. You understand? We're not going to be able to pray long enough, not going to be able to pray hard enough. There's nothing we can do. Hearing a word from God does not come through effort. It comes through surrender. Amen. It comes through surrender. So how does this church fulfill the mission that God has laid before us? Can I give you a little piece of advice? Follow my lead. Because I'm just going to surrender to God. I'm going to surrender to God and say, God, you're doing it. It's all you, so I'm going to listen to you, and I'm just going to do what you tell me to do. So I'm going to be surrendered. So what you see in me, do. Amen. What you see in me, what you hear in me, what you watch in me, do. Again, not because it's me. It's because the Spirit is in me. Amen. And that's what you're seeing, and that's what I want to work in you. God bless you. Don't forget.